And it was trying to rain yesterday when I started this uh, segment on the river birch. And I was able to get some younger examples of a river birch. And the older examples in that park were getting too wet for the bark to show its true color. It was uh, not good teaching uh, video environment. So here we go. About 40 miles up river on the New River now. I was on the Kanawha. The name changes to the New River as you go upstream. And it's a very large Appalachian River. It flows for many, many miles out of the Appalachian Mountains. It's a very large river with some incredible recreational opportunities. But this river birch helps keep the river bank from washing away. Here's an example like yesterday's with the peeling bark. But as they get older, Come right in just a few hundred feet here. The peeling bark is only at the top, and at the bottom it becomes more platy and chunky. So a slightly darker hue, instead of being orange and a, a whitish orange, it's more of a bronze, a dark bronze. Almost resembles the bronze of the yellow birch but it doesn't have the peeling nature of the yellow birch. A yellow birch tree this size would be peeling in small little um, curls, and this one does not when it's a foot in diameter. Here's a foot in diameter river birch, and it's got the plates. Again, the bronzish yellow hue, but not the same texture of a similar, similarly aged yellow birch. And the leaves are quite different too. I'm going to do yellow birch leaves if I can today. But for right now, let's look at the unique shape of the river birch leaf. It is more triangular than the uh, black birch or the yellow birch. So those are two species that could share the same, um, not always the same habitat, but they do live in close proximity to each other. This has a more of a triangular shaped leaf. It's probably two inches long. There's my index finger for scale. And if you look closely, it's got a larger sawtooth edge with little teeth along the sawtooth. So it's doubly serrated. That green example there shows that real clearly. So you got little teeth here and then the bigger teeth probably at least a quarter inch apart. So a unique leaf. A fairly unique bark and definitely a unique habitat. I don't know of any other birches that actually live on floodplains, but this does and that's where it lives. At this particular park here, once I get above the high water mark, I am not finding any river birch. And this is the banks of the new river. I'm actually at the uh, Glade, Creek, Glade Creek Boat Launch and Campground here. And this is in Southern West Virginia.